Hey guys, it's time for Weekly Weird News. And this week, it's all about two of our favorite hallmarks of this show. Sex and drugs, baby. Yeah. Now let's start off with sex because it's healthier and then move on to drugs for a little dessert. Yeah, because dessert's unhealthy but delicious, just like drugs. Here in America, the word prostitute conjures up images of bruised up, worn out crack addicts sucking dick in dark alleys and shady motels to pay off their pimps. And that's a pretty depressing image, to be honest. But in countries where prostitution is not only legal but well regulated, it's a significantly less horrifying industry. So let's set aside the whole moral argument on whether or not selling sex to strangers for money is right or wrong. Uh, it's at least a whole lot safer over in Germany where prostitution is legal and operates like a legit business with big brothels often situated in the middle of urban areas and not controlled by organized crime. For the most part at least. Uh, anyway, as an example of just how different Germany's attitudes about prostitution are to our own, a social network for the sex worker industry, yes that exists, is seeking to hire a brothel quality control tester to go around town evaluating the level of service at various brothels. In other words, they want to hire someone to go around banging prostitutes and rating them. Yeah. Like some sort of Zagat guide for paid pussy. Yeah. This is an actual job. This person will be paid to do this. Uh, we'll leave it to you in the comments to name this service. Something, uh, something similar to Yelp or uh, Zagat or uh, anything like that. Bang Google it. reviews? Bang it? Sure. Uh, the job description reads, Test brothels for service, cleanliness, and compliance with safe sex practices. You will enjoy sex with various women, and then create a score which is then published to our website. You must also visit our events such as bukkake parties and gangbangs, which you'll then evaluate according to their quality. Of course, not just any horny dude can sign up for the position. <laughs> you gotta be college educated, preferably with an emphasis in the hotel industry, you gotta be fluent in German and French, you gotta have good health and hygiene, and have a working knowledge of quality management systems. Yeah. Uh, but you also need to have practical experience from several years of brothel visiting. So, having a background in, of being super horny is definitely an asset, but you know, you need a lot more than that. They're taking submissions through their website and presumably narrowing their massive number of applicants down to a few all-star Johns that they'll bring in for the most bizarre job interview ever. So you say you have sex with a lot of prostitutes. Tell me about that. Anyways, it sounds like a pretty formal standard job filling process because even though fucking hookers is totally okay in Germany, they're still classy as fuck. If prostitution were legal here in the US and there was a similar job opening, that shit would be a reality competition show on the Playboy channel, guaranteed, and we'd all watch it. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of Playboy, would it surprise anyone out there to learn that Hugh Hefner's Playboy Mansion had secret tunnels installed below it so that celebrities could sneak in and out of the place without anybody knowing? No? Okay, that's good because apparently that's exactly what happened. Yeah, it looks like some members of the Playboy staff found some blueprints showing underground tunnels from nearby homes of celebrities like Jack Nicholson, Warren Beatty, Kirk Douglas, and James Caan that led right under the mansion and have stairways leading up into the property. Yeah, the current staff doesn't know much about them, but one did say that they were sealed up back in 1989 when Hefner and Mary one of his playmates. Hugh, you gotta close up those tunnels. You could just seal up the tunnel. Warren right? Beatty just pops out of nowhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's some fucking baller shit. Yeah. I wish it still existed. Like, those tunnels are probably still open, like sealed up, but you could probably get down to them somehow. Yeah. Then we could sneak into Jack Nicholson's house. Some naked old woman down there. Help! <laughs> Help! <laughs> Help. <laughs> Anyways, now that we've got this week's weird sex shit out of the way, let's move on to drugs. Yeah! Weed, meth, and ecstasy, those are all illegal basically everywhere, but that doesn't stop people from buying and selling it and occasionally getting arrested for it. Yeah. But once cops arrest someone with drugs and put them behind bars, they've still got a bunch of drugs on their hands and they've got to get rid of it somehow, right? They can't just bury it in the ground or shoot it into space. Oh, that'd be cool though. Yeah. Uh, they got to destroy it. And the easiest way to do so is by burning it. And as the town of Tangerang Ooh. in Indonesia found out, burning 3.3 tons of drugs in public has the side effect of getting everyone nearby that fire totally high as balls. Mm -hmm. Onlookers reported headaches and dizziness, and one journalist said they had to sit down and have a cup of tea to offset the effects. Ooh. The weed was valued at $1 million, so I mean, at least it didn't go completely to waste? I mean, anyone with common sense who knows how marijuana works would know that burning a $1 million worth of it is basically like hotboxing the entire neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say that all these people that turned out to watch the bonfire knew exactly what they were getting into. They knew what they were doing. Uh, when else are you gonna have the chance to get totally blazed in the presence of a bunch of cops and have the perfect excuse? But whether or not those townsfolk intended to get high or not, a 58-year-old man in Michigan definitely didn't know what he was getting into when he decided to munch on some of the brownies that his 17-year-old daughter had so thoughtfully baked and left on the counter. Aw. Those brownies, shocker, were special brownies, and their effect on the man led him to frantically call 911 because he believed he was having a stroke. Ugh, yeah, once help arrived, it became clear that the man wasn't having a stroke, nope. but was in fact high as fuck. Yep and his daughter admitted that the brownies were laced when she was questioned about it by right. authorities. Sheriff Mike McCabe of Independence Township commented, I don't know about you, but when my wife bakes some brownies and leaves them out, 
They're there for someone to eat. And he's right. He is right. If you put brownies on the table, you gotta eat them. Yeah, why the hell are you leaving your edibles just sitting around for your 58-year-old dad to eat, you little jerk? Yeah, that's the question the courts will be asking her since she'll probably be charged with at least possession for this one, uh, yeah. and she'll be charged as an adult. Ooh. So good job. Just because weed is becoming more and more acceptable in the eyes of the law doesn't mean you can just get people high without their permission, you dingus! You're gonna ruin it for everyone else. Yeah, you're gonna give me an anxiety attack. But hey, at least you didn't stab someone. Yeah, over in Ohio, which is catching up to Florida as far as dumb weird shit goes, a 50-year-old woman has been charged with felony assault for stabbing her 61-year-old boyfriend for having the gall to eat all of the couple's salsa. I mean, I mean, I, I can kind of sympathize yeah. if it were guac. I mean, yes, I could see stabbing someone for eating it because everyone knows the guac is not free. It costs extra. Exactly. It's also still pretty fucking delicious, though. And this woman seems like she really loves that shit because after he devoured her precious spicy snack, she jammed a pen into his crotch, Ooh. knocked over his TV, grabbed a knife, and then stabbed him in the stomach. Holy fuck, she's like some sort of paste picante fueled Jekyll and Hyde. Salsa smash! Yeah, so anyway, uh, you know, we see a lot of stories that almost make it into the show every week, but a lot of them don't really lead anywhere except The headlines having... are the best part. Right, so here's your headlines for the stories that didn't make the show this week. Michael Jackson used to prank call Russell Crowe with terrible jokes. <laughs> oh, that's cute. A modernist phallic masterpiece with very suggestive floor plan is up for grabs. Cute. That's a dick-shaped house. Yeah. Bull statue loses genitals. New Hampshire man mugged Girl Scouts. Oh. This woman didn't get any bacon in her burger, so she shot up the drive-thru. I know the feeling. Yes. All 40 runners fail at 100-mile Tennessee mountain race. The mountains were too tough for them. <laughs> 100 miles is a long distance. It's a long distance, especially when you're running up mountains. A bank robbery defendant Andrew Gilbertson takes witness stand in trial, eats feces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we probably could have covered that. Yeah. Man escapes jail by sending an email telling them to let him go. That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Australian Disability Conference not wheelchair accessible. <laughs> Russian school children invited to spend holidays in North Korean camps. Oh, that sounds fun. It'll bring the countries together. All right, guys, that's Weekly Weird News for this week. We, what the fuck's going on? Oh, sorry. How did you get over there? Anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was our show, and uh, April Fool's <laughs> Day's stupid. Yeah. Bye.